thank all of you for joining us here uh, at the very first ever Strata Hadoop World in Asia. Uh, I will say uh, that I'm absolutely thrilled with the news you just heard. The fact that the first time we've ever come to this part of the world with this conference, we attracted a sellout crowd. Now, it's not a surprise to me. It's fantastic that we've got this level of interest in the region, uh, but I think it really highlights the excitement that we all feel for big data across industries. And in order to commemorate this moment, I'm going to ask all of you guys to join me in a photograph that I want to tweet for our inaugural event. So everybody say, hi, Internet. Woo! <laughs> all right. And uh, please retweet that when I get it up after the talk. Um, we're seeing this explosion of interest in big data around the world because of the value that data and analytics are bringing to all sorts of businesses. Now, those of you who know about Cloudera will know that we specialize in delivering Apache Hadoop and the rich suite of ecosystem projects around Hadoop to enterprises that want to transform themselves, that want to do business in better ways. And we've been working on this for more than seven years now. Seven and a half years ago, we founded the company in the summer of 2008. The market and our business have grown dramatically in that time. We're very, very excited about Hadoop. It surprises some people to hear me say that we expect that Hadoop will disappear in the next couple of years. That's a strange thing for a guy who runs a business that's built on this incredible open source technology to say. But let me explain exactly what I mean when I say that. It's not that Hadoop won't be important. It's not that you won't be using Hadoop and the rich ecosystem of projects around it in your businesses. What I mean is that that foundation is going to become so ubiquitous, it's going to be so common, that we won't need to talk about it anymore. Rather than talk about the foundation of the building, we'll talk about the amazing structures that get built on top. The applications, the analytics, the new ways to evaluate and extract uh, insight from data that were previously impossible. Hadoop will be important, but it won't be what we focus on any longer. We're going to see the emergence of a rich collection of applications and analytic solutions and data exploration tools that are native built to run on the platform. We are seeing that happen around the world now. And I've been able to present with partners and with customers about some of the fantastic work that they are doing. I'm fortunate today to be able to introduce to all of you Quinton Anderson. Quinton is the head of engineering at the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and he's here to talk to you about CBA's journey into big data and the fantastic and innovative work that uh, CBA is doing with Hadoop and friends. Quinton, welcome. Thanks, Mike. Take it away. So our journey with Hadoop uh, kind of started with analytics being the primary use case. We hired a data science team, and Hadoop kind of came along for the journey. So analytics has kind of been the key tenant from the beginning. But kind of if you think about the logical endpoint of why do you do analytics, well, it's there to fundamentally impact the business in some way. So we started out with building some models, competing with traditional modeling techniques, and showed some really good uplift. And the next thing you need to do is operationalize analytics. And to do that, you've got to have all the data flowing in one place. Uh, you've got to be able to promote your experimentation into production, so on and so forth. And so we landed up with our Hadoop instance in front of our warehouse. And we landed up with this really nice split of kind of internal BI regulatory type workloads existing on our warehouse and analytics existing on our Hadoop instance. And the next logical step is really focusing on the operational attributes. And once you've done that, the next logical step is kind of this evolution into affecting the decisions and the way the product systems within the organization work. So it doesn't help building a predictive model, coming up with some kind of analysis, and having that not affect the way customers interact with your business. So the real next step in the evolution for us is taking analytics in this truly operational form and making a entirely analytics or data-driven enterprise. So moving from just analysis, operational analysis, and into really decisioning and have that affect frontline, have that affect our channels, and have that affect our core business processes. So if you unpack what that looks like, kind of from uh, an architectural point of view, 
huge number of channels within a bank like ours. Um, Frontline, outbound marketing, lots of touch points with our customers, lots of extremely rich data. We've, we're really, really privileged in the kind of data that we have internally. And Hadoop kind of starts out as the one place to store all of that, deep copies of it, subsetting it across to the warehouse, but increasingly it becomes a way to move read workload off the, the systems of record. It becomes a way to do experimentation and it becomes a way to fundamentally affect the product systems and the way we interact with our customers. So today, uh, interactions, what is the next best offer, how are we going to interact with you via the website, how are we going to interact with you via the mobile, and to an extent some of the more core business processes like credit decisioning start to form part of our Hadoop ecosystem. So I think the, the main point from my side is that there's this definite evolution from you need to have one place to manage data and you've got data-centric views of the world, you step into doing analytics and once you've done that you have to be able to operationalize analytics and that's a non-trivial exercise. And once you've done that, you've got to be able to iterate quickly, put these things into production and have them actually affect your fundamental business processes. And so you become an analytic-centric enterprise. Quentin, that's fantastic. Thank you for the detail you've given. Uh, I know that one of the real advantages of this event is that we're able to bring together new folks to the technology, people who are interested in working with big data, with real practitioners, people who've got some experience. For the benefit of this group, many of whom may be just getting started, I'd love to ask you a little bit about the bank's experience and your experience in making big data happen at CBA. Uh, you talked about operationalizing analytics, providing these tools to business users. How has that gone? Have there been cultural challenges or changes that you folks needed to meet in order to proliferate the technology? Sure. So, I mean, the, the obvious one is skills. You've got to find the right kind of people for this kind of technology. There's lots of subtle things like the analysts within the organization have very much a traditional view on how you do analytics. And so as you bring more advanced modeling techniques, uh, notions like is your model explainable start to become real uh, friction points mm -hmm. to getting more advanced analytics rolled out in the group. And then also the, the risk appetite for just the sheer amount of change we introduced was quite difficult to get across the line. Uh, I'll be glad to talk to people about why this is easy and how it goes well. I think one of the really useful things that you can share as a practitioner is what hasn't gone so well. Have there been challenges or difficulties that you've had to overcome in rolling out this technology across your organization? Sure. So uh, we initially tried to roll this out in an IT organization that looked like a traditional IT uh, enterprise IT organization. So a lot of kind of what Gartner calls mode one uh, style thinking, infrastructure, et cetera, drives a lot of high price points and makes it very difficult to roll out scale infrastructure. So that's one significant challenge. And then we started this journey fairly early relative to a lot of our enterprise competitors. So a lot of what we needed for analytics, things like MLlib, et cetera, didn't exist at the time. So a lot of the tools that we uh, built originally, we had to build ourselves. So storage layers for features for machine learning, we had to build ourselves, data science pipelines, concepts that exist in things like MLlib today, we had to build from scratch ourselves. And indeed today, we, we have uh, data science pipelines used by a lot of our analysts, and we're migrating a lot of that functionality often onto things like MLlib. Excellent. Well, listen, Quentin, thank you very much for stopping by. Appreciate your sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You've heard about one practitioner's experience in rolling this technology out for real. The advantage of this conference is you get to hear that story from many of your peers here in the region and around the world. Hadoop began as a very simple collection of technologies, one big scale-out storage system, HDFS, and a single data processing framework called MapReduce. Hadoop today, years later, is much more interesting, much more powerful, much more capable. While you're here today, you're gonna hear a lot about Apache Spark, a powerful new framework for working with data at scale. Cloudera recognized the opportunity in the Apache Spark project and embraced it more than two years ago now, pulling it into our distribution and allowing users to work with data in Spark as well as in MapReduce and the other engines in the system. We made major forward investments in Spark, launching our one platform initiative uh, an effort to drive security, scalability, manageability, stability into that platform. We've just announced our embrace of MLlib and our extension of MLlib in the Spark framework for the benefit of our customers. One of the technologies that you heard uh, Quinton talk about for machine learning 
for analytic applications. Spark is going to be a very powerful way for you to work with data. Spark is one example of a tremendous change that we've seen happen over the seven and a half or eight years that we've been around as a business. Spark began as HDFS and MapReduce, one processing engine, one storage engine. Today, it is a multi-engine collection of tools aimed at data analysis at scale. Impala for high-performance SQL analytic queries, Spark, of course, MapReduce, of course, search technology built on Lucene, the Apache Solar Cloud technology, Lots of different ways to process, transform, and analyze a single shared data set. This is why Hadoop has been so successful. It's grown because the open source community has continued to innovate. You can be sure that that innovation hasn't stopped. Spark is great, Impala is great, Search is great, MapReduce is great, but what's even more great is that as a community, we get to work together and continue to make this thing better, continue to allow it to take advantage of new analytic frameworks. In order to make this work, we've had to drive enterprise-grade capabilities into the platform consistently and across the board. And I want to talk about some of the things that we've announced in the last month or two and that you've got an opportunity to learn about while you are here at Strata Hadoop World. First of all, we've introduced a new open source project called Record Service. The idea with Record Service is to provide a consistent security model across all of your data. Strong encryption, good key management, user and role-based authentication and access control. The tools that if you're a bank or a hospital or a telecommunications provider, you need to live up to the regulatory and compliance constraints that are on your business. You can't put big data in a big data platform if that platform's not secure. Record Service is a new open source project that you can participate in that's aimed at delivering the same consistent security no matter whether you spark your data or MapReduce your data. It's a critical piece of the ecosystem and one that we're very proud to be driving forward. We've also been driving innovation at the storage layer. Now, you, you've heard me talk a couple of times about HDFS. This is the Hadoop distributed file system. One big, massive scale out storage system. Land any kind of data in there that you like for as long as you like. Very, very cost effective. Good fault tolerance and reliability and availability. You can land data much more inexpensively than was previously the case in traditional enterprise software. And because you get all of that data in one place, you can process and map reduce, you can process and analyze it in lots of ways. HDFS was great for the original workload that Google described. It's large sequential transfer logs and web activity where you land a bunch of data and then read through that data in order doing your analyses. But not every workload looks like that. The open source community created HBase, a very powerful NoSQL engine that runs on top of that same framework. A way to deliver records in real time, to support web-based applications that need very fast record fetch, put get support. HBase is awesome, and it meant that we could take on new workloads, workloads that were not otherwise accessible. HBase does single record access. HDFS does large sequential in order record access. But there was an important missing part of the puzzle, an important class of applications that didn't run well in the framework. We've announced a new project called Kudu, and we've sponsored it for incubation and the Apache Software Foundation. Kudu is a third storage alternative. HBase is great for single record access. HDFS is great for log structured access. Kudu is aimed at Internet of Things, time series, traditional relational aggregation queries, scanning through tables, aggregating on records, very, very fast aggregation support and good update support. It fills in a gap in the storage platform that we believe is gonna open up new consumption for Hadoop and big data. Uh, we're very excited to release uh, Kudu through the ASF and we invite all of you to participate in the beta to get involved in using and developing the software. The third innovation that I want to talk to you about today, and again, you can learn more while you're here at Strata Hadoop World, is what we call Cloudera Navigator Optimizer. Now, this is new technology that we've just released to beta in the last several weeks. 
It is a hosted service that allows you to upload queries that you run against your data. The engine analyzes those queries and helps you optimize them so that they run extraordinarily well in a big data framework. Helps you lay out your data in a sensible way, helps you reformulate those queries so you'll be able to run them in massive parallel. It's a powerful tool for expanding the analytic surface of Apache Hadoop. Again, we think this is gonna allow big data technology to support a broader collection of workloads and allow you more choices in what you do with your big data. All of this is happening. All of the progress that we're making is driven by the open source community. And that, again, is why Hadoop has been so successful. A single vendor could never have created this technology and made it proliferate in the way that it has. But the fact that we can tap the global skill of the entire planet in order to build, innovate, deploy, use this technology means that it goes faster and gets better faster than it would possibly do if it were proprietary. And I want to invite all of you to join us in that journey on behalf of Cloudera and on behalf of the broader Apache software community. We'd love your contribution. We'd love your adoption of this technology. You've got a chance to get involved and make the ecosystem better by your participation. We've been doing this for a while now. I told you Cloudera is seven and a half years old, but this is the 10th anniversary of the Apache Hadoop project. Doug Cutting, whom you saw just a little bit ago, and Mike Caffarella created Apache Hadoop in 2005. In that 10 years, as a global community, we've gone from HDFS MapReduce, fairly limited, very powerful, but constrained set of big data capabilities, to the unbelievable fast-moving ecosystem you see today, including Spark and Impala and all of the rest of these capabilities with security and data governance and so on. That is enormous progress for enterprise software to have made in 10 years. Please join me in congratulating Doug and Mike and the global Hadoop community on that 10th anniversary and happy birthday Hadoop. <laughs> we look forward to working with all of you in the months and years to come. Let me thank you for attending and let me encourage you to use your time at the conference to see some of the fantastic talks that have been arranged, the great submissions that have come in, and network with one another. Build your networks and, and build your best practices. Thank you very much and welcome to Singapore.